Well, hello. Today I'd like to give you my first impressions of a Moonman M6. This is a pen that interested me since, well, since I saw it. I may have mentioned some aspirational pens last year around the holidays, and one of them was a Sailor King of Pens. Now I want to amend that just slightly, because I had a specific Sailor King of Pens in mind. It was an ebonite model that had no external features, no trim rings, no nothing, just plain black ebonite. But the thing was so darn expensive, I couldn't justify it. And there's some other pens at that price point. If I were to splurge like that, I'd rather get. So that pen has been off the table. And honestly, I haven't gotten any of those aspirational pens. But I have something that may well substitute. So let's take a look at it. So the Moon Man M6 arrives in a rather festive-looking zebra box. If only zebras had fur quite that cool. Which covers up a more conservative box. Open it up. There it is. Oh, come on. Seriously, dude? <laughs> there we go. Okay, we'll pull it out backwards in a little plastic doohickey. Okay, so not at quite ebonite. This is a very dark wood. But that is the aesthetic of that Sailor King of Pens I saw. Just wow! So we've got a little Moon Man there. Nothing else. No other branding. Nothing there. Nothing there. I haven't actually opened it yet, but oh my god, is that tight. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good or a bad sign. <laughs> uh, so open it up. Reveals a little bit of excitement. Open it up further. And it's a piston filler. I don't know that I care for that gold there. I kind of wish it was black. Yeah, I'm just thinking of the ebonite pen that I really want, but just can't talk myself into. So it's not quite as classy and cool right now, but force this. Oh my God, that's tight. Force this back on. There it is. Not quite the black of ebonite, but pretty cool. And I get a workout besides. So I'm not 100% certain if this is real wood or not, but. You know, the shrinkage suggests possibly. So I'm going to fill this pen up. Uh, I have a bottle of ink I've been trying to use up, so that's what I'm going to use no real meaning to it. It's just so close to empty. i like, hey, I get rid of a bottle of ink. So we're going to use some Noodler's Apache Sunset. I heard no bubbling as I screwed down the piston. But I will say it made a decent fill there. We'll do uh, two more times for luck. Or flushing or whatever. Still heard no bubbling. One more. And we have just unscrewed the whole piston. But we do have a full fill. And a little less ink in the pen. Or in the bottle. So I may soon be able to get rid of that bottle, which will mean, you know, one less bottle of ink in my collection. So 
So let's see how it writes. So Moon Man M6. This has Noodlers. Apache Sunset. Which is actually a decent shading ink. It's not, you know, one of my favorite inks in my collection, but it does have some interesting shading. Uh, flex. Clearly no. Does it have some line variation? Absolutely. This is actually a pretty wet nib. Wetness and flow. Ugh. Ooh, look at that. Do a little dab on my wiping cloth because yipe, that's a lot of ink coming out all at once. I don't care for that. Sometimes when that happens, it means uh, a little too much flow, and I already see a little more ink. Not showing up yet, but I think it will. A little more ink showing up than I really like. There is such a thing as a pen that's too wet. The smear test. Not bad, but when you look up here and see that some of this is still wet, I'm just going, yeah. But it could have been my attempts at flexing. I didn't really push it too far, but... Well, if it's not a flex nib, it's probably not built to handle that amount of ink. Reverse writing. You know, it feels just as smooth as the regular writing, but definitely a lot more fine. And finally, the world-famous Pierre Gustafson test. Just see if it'll drip. No, it doesn't really want to drip. So maybe that was just a fluke up here. I don't think it did that bad. And we forced the cap on again. That's a feature I do not like. Of course, one other test I always like to do. Whoops, I missed. That, well, that was not the pen's fault. That was my fault. Yeah, that, that's actually really good. In fact, uh, definitely has a little bit of spring to the clip. So, I like the clip. Uh, I like the aesthetics of this pen. I'm not so thrilled with the capping it. I, I've... Okay, I'll just be honest. I don't think I've ever had a pen that's that tight for putting the cap on. Ever. Uh, that's really tight. Uh, the writing experience is pretty good. It, it got a little wet there for a little while, but that could be because this is a first impression. It's the first time it's ever been inked, and uh, could be in those first few minutes. It's a little awkward. Some pens tend to be a little dry when they're first inked up, so I'll give it the benefit of a doubt. But on the whole... I like the aesthetics. The writing experience isn't exciting, but it's good. So, uh, yeah, I like this pen. I'm impressed with it. I just really hope that the uh, capping and uncapping becomes a lot more, uh, less muscly. I, I don't want to have to work that hard to uncap my pen. And there's always that fear that what if this is the time that I can't fully screw the cap back on and I'm forced to look at that, that gold band and then it just doesn't look like the Sailor King of Pens anymore. So, time will tell. Um, I think that's this is a good point to introduce or remind you. This is a first impression. I don't have the benefit of experience with this pen. I haven't even had a day with this pen. My writing experience with this pen has been captured here on digital video. So, I uh, look forward to someday I will do a full review of the pen and hopefully have more intelligent things to say about it. Unless they really end up hating it, then 
probably I'll never say anything again. So, <laughs> well, thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.